So, welcome to the sixth edition of Sardines. It's a meetup of Ruby that's been out for like two years now. So we're, try we're trying to start to reboot the meetup. And hopefully this will go well and with more people next time. But. Okay, so my name is Philip. I work here at Runtime Revolution. And I'm going to be talking about SolarGraph. So, SolarGraph is a language server for Ruby, and it's also the name of a, a Ruby extension for VS Code, Atom, Emacs, and Eclipse. Uh, so, first things first, I'm going to explain what a language server is. So, a language server is basically a, uh, an application that implements the language server protocol. The language server protocol was something that the guys at, from Microsoft came up with for VS Code. It's an open standard since 2016, and uh, the specification is hosted on GitHub. You can actually check it out and comment on it and make it more chaotic than it already is. Uh, so what's the idea behind this? The language server protocol, the problem is that they're trying to fix is that when, you're tra when you have a language and you want to give support to that language on an editor, you need to develop it. Uh, you need to develop the language features in the editor's language. So depending on which editor you point to, you need to develop on that on a, a different language. For, so for example, Sublime, you develop the extension in Python for VS Code in TypeScript or JavaScript, Atom, JavaScript, or CoffeeScript, it, that's when they launched the, the editor, that's what they were going for, and so on. And uh, the, that <coughs> gives us two problems. So first, uh, you have to develop in a bunch of different languages to give support for the language that you have. And second, the, the language features are mostly best implemented in the language and not the, the language of the editor. So for example, for Ruby, the, the Ruby parser is written in Ruby and you can actually import it. And it, it's kind of sucks that you, if you wanted to develop an extension for Emacs, for example, you need to create a Ruby parser in Lisp. So that's all, all that extra work. So the idea of the protocol is that instead of having to do all that work, all you need to develop for the, the, each editor is an extension that implements the, the protocol from the client side. And then there's the language server, which is implemented in the, the language that you want to give support to. So in case of SolarGraph, it's written in Ruby. And then there's an extension for each of the editors that uh, communicates with, the, with the, the server. So what the server actually looks like, the protocol, this is an example, uh, which basically I ripped from the the protocol's website it's to give an explanation here. So the idea is that you have the development tool, the user, when it, the user opens the document, the client extension will send a notification to the language server. This is the, the notification name, which is text document did open, and it sends the document. It will send actually the, the whole document, depending on the, which, um, editor you're on, which editor you're on. So VS Code will send the whole document, something like, uh, Sublime didn't use to, depending on what you do, because the for VS Code, once you open the document, VS Code owns the document, so if you make any change and you don't save the document, you still want to have all the language features. So what will happen then is the, the, the language server should store the document in memory, and then the development tool, once the user makes um, a change, it will send notifications with the changes, and the developer that made the language server needs to adapt that and upload update the, the document, which is pretty hard to do. I mean, it's simple enough, but it's annoying. Uh, so these are example of some other feature data. So one example is like once you the user changes the document, the language server can publish diagnostics. Diagnostics uh, it's a broad range term, so it's something like a, a linter warning or a compilation warning, depending on which language you're on. So if you're familiar with VS Code, anything that have, has the, uh, those underlines, squiggly underlines with green or red, that's a diagnostic for <coughs> the VS Code language. And um, so there's some other examples. So there are two kinds of uh, messages here. There's a notifications, which is just to notify the language server. And there are actually requests. So in this case, the user clicks on the go to definition and it sends that request to the language server with the uh, Usually what you use to identify a document is the URI, which is the path of the file, and the position where you're trying to get the, the definition. And the language server will run the code and find the location of that definition and send it back. And the user gets redirected to that file. So this communication is all done via JSON RPC, which basically 
just JSON, but in uh, between um, processes. And this is what it looks like. So that's the method name, right, which identifies the operation, and the param. Basically, this is the basic structure. So you'll always have a method and always have params. The params change depending on what's being requested. So this is an example of a request sent from the client. This is uh, an example of the request of the response from the server. So to these vary depending on the, the kind of feature. Usually has a result for auto completion and stuff. The rest, I did some contributions to a language server before, and I. Not only familiar with the auto completion side of things. I don't really know about the, the rest of it. But um, I assume it's kind of the same. <coughs> so these are the features that are supported by the language server protocol. Uh, so code completion is basically autocomplete. Hover is when you're trying to hover on a symbol and it will give uh, contextual information on that symbol. Jump to definition, which is when you click with a command click and it will go to the definition of it. Finding references, which is useful for the refactoring and stuff. Diagnostics, which is I've gone already gone through, but it's uh, lintings and build errors and stuff like that. And symbol searching, which is to find the symbols in your, f basically it identifies all the symbols in the file. And the VS Code will have a, a tree of all the symbols in there. I never used that much, but I know that all the editors usually have that stuff. Oh, it's also, I think it's used for code folding as well, if you want to fold, depending on the symbols. So you might be asking yourself, why did you try to learn this stuff? And the answer is basically is that um, I don't only work with Ruby, I've worked with other languages, both for personal projects or in the company. And uh, one thing that I really liked Ruby, and when I changed to, like, the first change I had was to Python, which is pretty different and the same at the same time. And I hated Python, but one of the things that I found was that the tooling was pretty great. And then I switched to Golang, which is even, I had, a worse reaction when changing to Golang, but then I, I really enjoyed it. And one of the things from Go is that it has a really nice tool, tooling around it. And uh, here is an example for uh, TypeScript, which is also I, I like. This is an example for of the Jest package. I don't know if any of you ever used this, but uh, it's pretty neat. So this is a test file. This is a, a single test case. And this green circle over here indicates that the test has passed. So this uses that published diagnostics and stuff for the that I've talked before. So if you change anything in the, your workspace and the test, it starts running the tests that are associated with it. And if it fails, it will show a warning, even if I don't have the file open. And when I click it, I get redirected to the file. This signals that the test is failing. Here it will show the, the actual error message. And this button here, which is pretty neat, if you click on it, it will run just that test. And if you have debugger breakpoints someplace, it will stop on them. And this is awesome. And there's nothing like this on Ruby. <laughs> It just annoys me. <laughs> and I have to, like to ask, like, why is this crap hard to develop for Ruby? I noticed that like, there aren't that many projects for, or at least the projects that are for Ruby, they don't have that many contributors. But one of the basic reasons is that there are some qualities in Ruby that make it really hard to develop uh, tooling for. And it's kind of the same reasons why we usually like Ruby. So basically, it's, it has duct typing, it has dynamic method definitions, it has dynamic method calling, it doesn't require you to import the code uh, every time, so you import it on one place, which makes it really hard for the code to find references and definitions and stuff. The typing makes it hard for the, the tooling to know what methods are associated with an object because you don't know what type it is. So there's a bunch of reasons why this it's really hard to develop. So I found Solograph and I've been tinkering with it a bit. I'm gonna show you just some cases of, of the auto-completion working on Solograph. So I have this video here. This is a very simple example. So I create um, an array and it has the methods for array and the documentation is pretty neat. This here, these are the diagnostics that I mentioned before. So basically this is not valid Ruby code yet because I don't have the method definition there. So I wish I could speed the video up. And, uh, but it's not like perfect. So here uh, I mapped it to an integer and when I do the each block inside, the editor doesn't know that uh, it's an integer, which should be simple, but apparently it's not. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been there. Uh, a little more complex example, if I tried, I tried it out with classes. So if you define a class, uh, when you instantiate the class, you get all the basic methods for it for uh, objects and stuff, which is the, the basic definition of it. If you add a method to it, it will show up on the autocomplete without having to reload the page or anything. 
I did an example here, so the method returns an integer. And when I work on the method, it actually has the autocomplete for the integer. So it does some magic around the typings of the return methods and stuff, which is useful. Some examples around Rails, so it has auto-completion for some methods in Rails. If you configure it correctly, which I'll touch on in a moment, if you install SolarGraph like from the box, it won't have this like, at all. And uh, it can also set it up to have a auto-completion for uh, finder methods for the active record, which is useful when you're trying to build out those complex queries. So how do you set this up? So basically, you install the extension in your editor. And that should be it, but uh, you need to edit the gem file for it to work correctly with the gems that you have. You need to run SolarGraph download core, which is a command, which you can actually run from the... So the language server protocol is extendable, and they extend it with this uh, operation. So the download core is to download the documentation for the Ruby version that you're running. And then yard gems, so you need to run this so it generates the documentation for all the gems that you have installed in your project. So that it will have the, well, it's twofold. So that you have the documentation and you actually have the methods, which I'll explain a little bit further uh, ahead. Uh, for setting up in a Rails project, there's this pinned issue in the GitHub repo. Basically, what you have to do is uh, create this file in the repo. This, uh, except from this part in the require, this is, are all the defaults. Here is where you ex uh, tell SolarGraph that all these packages are imported by default in all the, on all your files. So this is why uh, not having to import the method, the packages you're using in every file when you're using it, this is what, the, this is the problem that it causes so that you need to inform the tooling that you're using these packages. And uh, I thought it would be pretty cool to look into the code and see how they, even it has a lot of um, steps that you need to get to do before it works, but uh, I thought it'd be interesting to go through the code and see how like auto, something like autocomplete would work in SolarGraph. I looked into it. It wouldn't be a, good, a great idea to show it to you, especially because it's not, I mean, it is complex, but um, they rely heavily on the documentation and on Yard. So for the rest of the presentation, I'm gonna show you a little bit of uh, the Yard documentation, the, the language so that you can use it in the, when you're developing your project. So if you document the methods, so for example here, if you document that the method here with a return, the SolarGraph will know that uh, <coughs> this method returns a string, which is actually not the case, but since you put that there, then the autocomplete will show methods for a string. Same thing for addParam. addParam is to define the parameters that you have in the method. So if you define it as an array of strings, then you can call methods for arrays. And it has support for generics, so if, since you said that it was an array of strings inside the code block, then it assumes that it's a string, which is pretty cool. Overload allows you to overload the method, which is not something that Ruby supports per se, but you can document that. So basically, you define that if it receives a string, it will return an object. If it receives an array, it will return an integer, and then it will behave like that. So in this case, I pass it an, uh, an, obje uh, an array and it returns the object or this, the object, the integer. The integer, yeah. And then here, it returns the object if it's a string. Add type is not actually part of the yard specification. It's uh, particularly for SolarGraph. So basically, it lets you define that when a variable is of a certain type. This is useful if you're like, Doing one-off scripts, it's pretty useful to get the auto completion. Add parse is part of Yard, and I think is insane. Basically, the documentation tool will parse this code, and SolarGraph will run this code and evaluate, not run, but evaluate it. The useful thing is that your code won't run it because it's not, it's commented. But this is useful. So this is part of the the snippet that you need to include in your project for auto completion for Rails to work because this inclusion then extends from where I understood from the issue is that it's doing automatically in Rails, it's done automatically in Rails. So SolarGraph can figure out that it's being included or extended. So if you add that snippet, a bunch of methods will show up in your auto-completions. And if you want to go even overboard, you can use override, which lets you redefine a uh, method definition with other documentation. 
this is also good. So the idea with uh, the documentation in Yard is that um, a responsible gem uh, maintainer will document their code. In some cases they won't, and you can use override and parse to basically fix that in your project so that you can have autocomplete. This is actually how TypeScript uh, enforce typings in, on everything. So there's a repo where they, you can put typings for a package that doesn't have them and it will help you with your, with your development. This could be kind of the same thing, but there's no universal repo for uh, typings to exist. And uh, I have one last video showing off uh, a convoluted example that I built. So here, I'm using HT Party and Hashi, which are two pretty common uh, packages to have on a repo. And uh, I use this JSON placeholder API, basically returns this uh, response like this. And I, I was trying to get auto completion to work on the response. So, <coughs> yeah. So as you can see, I don't have the user ID or the ID initially on the response. It doesn't show up. So what you can do is add uh, on your class, you can just document. This is one that I didn't have a slide for, which is a method. So you can just say that it has a method called user ID and it returns the a string. And then when I go back here, res.userID, it has the user ID autocomplete and it has a string. And I was gonna go into more detail in the video, but I noticed that I made a mistake. It was actually a number. And <laughs> I decided to left it like this because it kind of shows that this is dangerous to do. <laughs> because the tooling will assume that it's a string, but once you run the code, it won't. And I mean, if you're just writing one-off scripts, that's fine. If you're writing code into your app and you're not actually testing it for some reason, for some edge case, it might bite you in the ass, but yeah. And that's it. So I hope you liked it. I mean, it's not an ideal tool, but it's, I think it's a good step for, to get some cool tooling for Ruby. And, yeah. Any questions? So um, I've used language servers before in Elixir, uh, and one problem that I had was that it kept. Um, it, it might have been just the like the buggy code on whoever developed the integration, but uh, for Vim it kept on compiling the code that I had. So mm -hmm. because it's a compiled language, it actually yeah. has to compile to give those. Um, what did you call it? Uh, warnings or. Uh, uh, diagnostics. Diagnostics, yeah. exactly. Um, so one thing that I would see was I'd suddenly have uh, a lot of processes just compiling my code because I'll uh, like, uh, write a lot, uh, like save a lot, uh, the, the files. Mm -hmm. So did you find that, like, did, did that happen to you with Go oh, yeah. in any way? Or? Go happened a little bit. Solograph happens sometimes. It's a memory hog because okay. it's imperfect code, right? It's in yeah. development. For Vim, the problem might be that it doesn't have, um, doesn't implement the full protocol on the extension side. So there, um, or in, on the language server. So the protocol has support for cancellation. So in case like you save the file five times in a row and it's compiling five times. So it, it can send a notice like this one is canceled, like cancel this request. And I know that, so this is a protocol. So the language server might implement it, but the, um, the extension that you have on the client might not. Thank you.